Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at how you can improve quickly by finding your level and choosing the right goals. This is for people that want to improve their drawing and those wanting to create simple concept art to improve their 3D object design. I place a lot of importance on this and do check out the video where I talk much more about it. We're going to use the example of drawing cars today, but it could apply to any sort of game asset type object. If you like what I do and you like what you've seen here, then do check out my Kickstarter, which is learning how to draw by creating game art, and do check out the other playlists and free courses on my channel. So why is finding your level so important? Well, you might be scouring YouTube and looking at courses online, wondering whether that video or that course is going to work for you. I do this myself. I'm always looking for different ways of doing things, but it can be really hard to find the right video. It could be beginner, intermediate, and what do those terms even mean? What level are they? Sometimes the things you're watching are really specific and they don't give you a broad outline. And don't get me wrong, there's lots of great tutorials, lots of great courses, but they might not be for you because you're at a different stage. So I've put together this scale for you to place yourself with guidance on the next step to take in your drawing development. And this is looking at just drawing, not coloring or landscapes, but again, more drawing sort of game asset -y type objects. So the first level you might find yourself at, that sort of beginner stage. And interestingly, any project I start, I usually start it off at this level. And that's sketching out your ideas in 2D. So flat sort of side on or front on angles. So there's no perspective to worry about. You don't even need to shade the objects. The keywords here are thumbnails and silhouette. Producing thumbnails because you're not spending too much time on one design, you quickly move on to the next one. And thumbnails, for those that don't know, are just small designs that give an idea of shape and form. And the idea is you do them really quickly so you get lots of ideas down. We're trying to practice shape, stroke, hand-eye coordination, and you can do these really quickly. So maybe give yourself one or two minutes maximum between each one, and they can be very rough. Again, it's quite important in my opinion to do this quickly because you have more fun, you improve faster, because you're not spending hours on tiny details that you're not really ready for. And if you do a bad shape or a bad design, you don't dwell on it, get frustrated, you just move on to the next one and you will get better quickly. You may only have one good one out of 10, but that's all you need. And from there, you can start adding a few details and colors maybe, or you can bring it into your 3D program and start tracing it. It gets more fun as you go along. As soon as you do the first one, it suddenly gives you more ideas for the next. Okay, so here's my example. I started off really simply with just a basic car design that anybody could kind of come up with, I suppose. It's really basic shapes, so there's a rectangle in the middle here, and you can kind of see where I've sort of outlined the shape and then put in my wheel arches over the top. Really rough, doesn't have to be smart or brilliant. I'm using a very thick pen that sometimes encourages you to do things a bit quicker, and it also helps for viewers to see it on YouTube. So nothing too special, just rectangles and circles. Then I thought I'd add a bit of character to this design and give it a bigger top, smaller wheels. You can probably tell that I'm drawing this pretty quickly and just getting down ideas, having some fun. And if you're doing this, then all the time you're practicing stroke, you're practicing shapes, but you're also designing at the same time. Moving on from this, I thought, how about some bigger wheels with that design? Didn't really work, so I moved on a bit and went for the other extreme, a really big top, tiny little wheels. And I quite like this one. Maybe that's a good low poly car design to do at some point. I then suddenly started thinking about monster trucks and thought I'd draw one of those out in 2D. Again, it's nothing special. It kind of looks a bit fun with these blobby type circles, which are more like potatoes or balloons. So you can see it doesn't have to be smart. It doesn't have to be accurate. We're just getting ideas down. We're practicing and we're building our skills. Moving on from this, I decided to try completely different shapes with some curves. Almost looks like it's cut in half. Then I embellished those curves a bit more into this next design, a bit more like a beetle. And then really went very curvy with the whole thing, which again, I kind of like. And you can see the rough outlines of me sketching this and then doing it in one long line, drawing over it. And that's something you might want to do is draw really roughly with some shapes and then draw over it with firmer lines once you've got your ideas. But generally speaking, as long as you're doing it quickly and moving on fast, that's the main thing. So again, moving on from this, I went to a sort of more sporty style using the curves, but with some sharp edges at certain points. And again, the ideas are really moving on, jumping around the place and having fun whilst doing it. The next one, I went for a dragster style Mad Max type scenario. And I quite like the sort of leaning forward style with different sized wheels and maybe different parts of vehicles being put together in that sort of Mad Max style. And that's another point which I won't go into too much, but using references, getting ideas from other places that influence you. Try not to copy them, just grab ideas from different places until you come up with your own. 
From there, I went on with the sort of monster truck style, and I thought, what about a monster truck with slightly smaller wheels, but I quite like those big chunky wheels, so I kept them for the final design, and I drew it out slightly more neatly, just to make sure I was absolutely pleased with the design, and then from there, I drew the final design, which again is still very rough, it's not particularly clean, but as a reference image, to take into Blender or as a starting point to draw over and tidy up, this is just great. And this time I've actually started drawing in some small details, like this strange engine type thing coming out the front here, spikes on the front and back, this gun at the back here, and I even put it on the ground with a couple of rocks. There is a tiny bit of shading in here you could argue, I've done thicker lines at the bottom to act as if the sun's coming down from the top, and that can be your next stage, as well as maybe adding colour to this and kind of completing your design. So that's the first level. It's all about practicing your hand-eye coordination, getting shapes, and understanding how those shapes can interact with each other. And I still use this level all the time for sketching out my ideas. So there you can see an overview of how they built up. And you can kind of see levels within this. So level 1A is just really basic shapes. 1B might be slightly more complex shapes like this. And 1C is finalizing with a bit more detail. And each of these are known as a thumbnail, that's why I say thumbnail is a key word. The other key word I mentioned was silhouette, and that's the outline of your shape. Notice on these I'm not doing much in terms of the inside shapes and the details, especially to start off with, because if your shapes don't work, then there's no amount of details that are going to rescue them. And that's a really common beginner mistake, not doing those initial stages and getting the silhouette looking good before moving on to those details. So those are the things you should be practicing. Keep going and keep working on those 2D sort of side on or front on angles. No perspective to get distracted by and there's a lot of fun to be had. So your goal at this level is to get relatively happy with the hand-eye coordination needed for simple shapes. Okay, so what about the next level? Well, I would say the next level of understanding is one or two point perspective or maybe isometric if you like that style. I'm not going to go into major detail of how we set up for that. I'm putting that in my course and you can find other videos on that on YouTube as well. So how will it move our designs on and what do we need to practice on? Well, again, you start with simple shapes, boxes, cylinders and pyramids. And if you're completely new to it and you're jumping from 2D to 3D, then just draw each of these shapes in one point perspective until you're a bit more comfortable. I've set mine up with a simple two point perspective grid. Then like in the first level, we experiment with different designs. This will be a bit slower, so you might want to take some of the 2D designs you've already done, ones you're pleased with, and then start converting them into 3D. And that's by using those simple boxes, cylinders, and pyramids. You do it at a really basic level, you don't go beyond those boxes and cylinders, that's the later stages. But it does take a little bit of time getting used to drawing objects in 3D, so keep it nice and simple, just get those areas defined from your original 2D designs. So don't add any details, curves, or anything like that without the angles working. If the angles don't work and the perspective doesn't work, it just won't look right no matter how much effort you put into it. So level two will be a bit slower to start off with and not quite as creative as level one. But again, I would encourage you not to spend too long on these things. Again, don't add any of the details, the curves and all those angles. Just get the boxes and cylinders nice and simple to start off with. And you can probably guess then what level three moves on to. That's where we start adding details and curves to your design. So you might want to take one of your objects from level two, where you've got the boxes on top of each other, and if you're doing that on pencil and paper, then you should be drawing very lightly because level three is where you draw over the top and you start getting those curves and blending the shapes together once you've got those angles set from level two. You might even want to add some shading at this point as well. But level three artists, you should start seeing your objects looking like the objects in real life to a degree anyway, depending on how crazy your designs are. Okay, so if we got to that point, what's level four? Well, for this level, I'm thinking that character elements and exaggerating shapes more, distorting the shapes slightly, and really adding fun to your objects. So here with this vehicle, you can see that the wheels are sort of pointing outwards. The bonnet has a sort of V shape at the front that's pushing outwards, and the top squashes in. It's still a very rough design, so a thumbnail. But if I was going to build a monster truck in 3D, then I'd want to draw out lots of these as thumbnails before settling on a design. And if I wanted it to be a piece of artwork, then I take one of those thumbnails and I start adding the detail and the shading. This is quite tough because when you distort the shapes, they move away from those traditional perspective lines that we use and you start having things at weird angles and they're a bit more organic and in that sense, hard to draw. Hopefully if you're an artist at this level, 
Then you're a bit quicker at the level two and level three stages. So you can thumbnail out some ideas for character designs relatively quickly before moving on to all those detailed aspects. So you can again do lots of thumbnails in 3D but with character elements. And even at this stage you'll want to be doing the basic perspective lines to make sure things are in line and working before distorting them and pushing the boundaries. So that's the pathway that I took to get to this design. Again, it's still actually very sketch-like. And you could argue there's a level five aspect where you start thinking about the texture of an object and you start painting colors on and so forth. It does depend on your final output and what this design is going to be used for. If it's just simple concept art, then this can easily guide a 3D artist along with the front and side profiles and they can remake your object in 3D. Once you get to this stage, you're a bit more comfortable and confident in your art and you should be able to progress from here by practicing these things regularly. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful to many of you out there deciding on your different levels and what you need to progress. Do remember to take a look at the Kickstarter if you haven't already. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.